the beginning. But not for everyone. From our room one. Beginnings are relative. Patient is seizing. Hold, 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 hold. Because if you look close enough, everything is related. Every story is part of a bigger whole. Beginnings and endings depend on who is telling the story. Steps are dropping, let's go. One story's beginning is another story's end. Lita? And the last super blood moon was five years ago. They say all kinds of strange things can happen under a blood moon. But a super blood moon? Uncle, can you switch that off, please? Hey. Work in the prisoner. No. Then visiting? No. Then you are there for... Yes. I was an inmate. Inmate? What do you do? What do I do? I killed the driver. Oh. How is my daughter? It's been hours. Well, uh, we had some complications during the operation, but I'm happy to tell you that overall the pancreatectomy was a success. So your daughter, your wife, is stable and recovering. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we owe you, Dr. Skyler. Oh, thank you. No, of course not. It's my job. <laughs> you can go in and see her now. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Come in. Dr. Alexis, you wanted to see me? Sit down. The board will be announcing the choice for department head tomorrow. Skylar, you're a strong candidate. Good job with Mrs. Tan. I nearly lost her. She started to hemorrhage late in the procedure and we barely stopped it. But you did stop it. Best not to second guess yourself. Yeah, but pancreatectomies are always risky. Mm. Maybe we should have exhausted all our options first. The procedure worked? Just barely. But it worked. A pancreatectomy was the best chance for long-term survival. It was an all-or-nothing move. I recommended a treatment. You agreed. Let's mm. move on. It was 100% the right choice. Mm? Yeah. I wish I was as sure as you about life or death decisions. You know, the, the house is still as it was uh, when you and... Thank you, Uncle Thomas. You know, it's good they were not around to see the... see what happened. You know, it's sad. It's really sad. Do you still think much of him? I have a busy day ahead. Sure. Yeah, sure.
Life break quickies are a nice perk of dating someone at work, huh? Someone? You, of course. Ah, oh, crap, lunch is nearly over. Me in the cafeteria later after a shift for a quick bite. Uh, might just go home, just I'm pretty tired. <clears throat> you better eat. You get grumpy when you don't eat. Yeah, what? There's their grumpy face. Boink! Is something wrong? Or did the full Dr. Jeffrey service tire you out a little too much, huh? No, it's not that. Tell me. Well, there's this writing workshop this weekend. I was thinking of attending it. Writing? You haven't written in years. I know. So I was thinking I could pick it up again. Why? You're a doctor. What's the point of writing a bunch of useless poems no one will read? Even if it's for myself? <laughs> for you? Depressing poetry? Come on! Look, Sky, do whatever you want. But it's just going to be a waste of time. Hmm? Just make sure you come to the cafeteria later. Hmm? Oh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey, out. So, extra chair stack over there. This is my bar. Job isn't complicated. Never gets crazy here. Mostly office people just getting a drink, uh, taking the edge off before heading home. Right. So when you get out? Uh, today. That's the hardest part. Readjusting. I've been in your shoes. Working right way is the best way. Thank you for taking me on. Hey, if one ex-con can't help another, who will, right? Here, first day gift. No bartender should be without one of those. It's the emergency plan for all the things that can and will go wrong in a place like this. <laughs> Plus, if the customers get out of line, I use a knife, man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't use a knife. I need the business. Oh, uh, your caseworker said you had no problems with drugs or alcohol, eh? No, I wasn't in for anything like that. Good. Only one rule here, don't drink what you sell. Hey, girlfriend. What are you doing late? Um, same thing as you, Francine. Consultation with a patient, no? Yes, yes. But after that? Uh, going home. Why? What's up? Oh, nothing. But we need some girl time in the cafeteria. Girl time in the hospital cafeteria. Wouldn't you rather go across the street? Cafeteria food is crappy. Crappy food is the new black. Ayah, just meet me in the cafeteria later. Okay. Fine. <gasps> oh, see you. Be there or be square. I'll see you there. Be there or be square. I'll see you there. Gin and tonics! Ma! Wait! You guys want more gin? Huh? Huh? Yeah, of course you do. Getting drunk is the point. Right! There you go. Enjoy! Never too early to get drunk. You forget that your life is still held bent into the toilet. <laughs> hey! You guy. Clarence did tell you his one rule, right? Derek! My name is Derek Clyde. See? I know your name. <clears throat> you were slurring back then when you introduced yourself, so I didn't know if you were scurried or shirt or whatever. Well, I'm not slurring now, am I? Clyde. And yes, Clarence told me one rule. Did you understand it? Because you seem to keep breaking it. Yes, I understood it. Clyde. I know it's rough, right? I myself came out a couple of months ago, so... You are an ex-con too. What do you do? Steal a couple of calculators. 
All right, don't need to be a jerk. What do you want, huh? I, I know! You guys want whiskey. There's a special um, whiskey. Two for you. And, oh, top up. One for me. Cheers. What is going on, Francine? Paging for Dr. Skyler, this is Dr. Jeffrey asking you for your hand in marriage. Uh, I uh, need some air. <laughs> You know, if you wanted to keep your book, you shouldn't have thrown it away. Can I get a vodka tonic? Um, and, uh, how about a beer? Because the beer is right here and the vodka is all the way. Yeah, man. I don't feel like moving right now. It's okay. I can take your order. Come on. <laughs> the drink. It's okay. Come here. Come here. Are you drunk? Maybe just a little bit. There was one rule. Don't drink. Yes, I know, Clyde, one of your extensive rule book we made. Hey, listen. I'm giving you a chance. Oh, uh, yes, I know. I am your big charity case, right? That's it. You're fired. Get him out of here. What? Wait, no, 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 no. Get my him Hey, out. this is your fault for asking for the vodka. Get out! Come, Come on. on. Huh? What what is Shut up. What? I mean, I used to write. And then when I became a doctor, everyone tells me that I can't spend my time writing. That being a doctor means being only that. Not that my writing is, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not like Emily Dickinson or anything. Not yet. Seems like you really love your writing. Do you love being a doctor? Well, my parents really wanted me to be a doctor, like so badly. I guess it wasn't until I started practicing that I realized that maybe I hadn't made my own choices. But you're helping people. That's great. Those I can help, but it's a thin line between survival and death sometimes. I nearly lost a patient today. She started bleeding internally late in the surgery and we tried everything, but she just kept losing blood. And at the very last second, we finally managed to stop it, but it was more luck than anything else. And now she's gonna go home to her husband, her mother, and none of them will ever really know how close they were to losing her. But you saved her. But I nearly didn't. I, I hate to lose anyone. And this 
really nothing you can tell them to make up for their loss. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. I... Same thing that's wrong with all of us. A human. All the particles whose paths were interrupted by your smile, the touch of your hair, hundreds of trillions of particles race off like children, their ways forever changed by you. That's beautiful. Well, scientific, but beautiful. Did you come up with it? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. It's a. Uh, it's called eulogy by an astrophysicist. I don't know. Somehow it makes me feel better about my limited time in this universe. Are you an astrophysicist? No. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, You're not gonna choke on your own vomit, are you? No, no, I'm fine. This your family? Was, was my family past tense. You know, when I was in prison, all I could think about was getting out. Every day for a year. And when it finally happened, <laughs> it's not how you pictured it. Not at all. My family, my friends, they all looked at me differently. I was working for a software company and had a bunch of old computers in storage. Old, but still okay. I was selling the classmates in uni. Needed help to pay for school. Company found out, made an example out of me. Uh, still, it's the way everyone looks at me. As if I'm... Some sort of hardcore criminal. <laughs> it's, like, it's not as if I killed anyone. I did. What? Death by reckless or dangerous driving. Ah. <sighs> he was a delivery driver. He had a wife. A kid. That's not even the worst part. You didn't think it'd be this way when you got out of prison. But I did. Exactly like this. Because this is what I deserve. I was an artist. But you're not an artist anymore. Not right now. You know what I want to do? What? Come on. <laughs> what? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, are we dancing now? Not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> <Ta -da>! Now we're dancing. People are gonna think we're crazy. <laughs> Let them. <laughs> I don't even know your name. Ryan. My name is Skylar. It's all about energy, isn't it? As Freeman says, you can only hope that your family will examine the evidence and satisfy themselves that the science is sound. And that they'll be comforted to know your energy is still around.
because not a bit of you is gone. You're just less orderly. And the board is going to go with somebody else with a department head position. What? He goes to you. Just like you goes to Jeffrey. Stay away from my son. I don't care. Just Can get out. Please, 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 just hear me out, please. Am I a horrible person? Yes, you are. You are making a huge mistake. You see. You see. Heaven.